Hey guys, here is a tutorial demonstrating my go-to method for creating organic rhythms in VCV Rack and in the modular world at large. This method uses a lot of the more traditional and basic types of modules such as LFOs, clock dividers, logic circuits, comparators, and others. Okay, to get started, what do I even mean by organic rhythm? People will have different answers to, to this question, but I think it is a rhythm that is musically informed, and that could only be played by a human. Well, only be played by a human until now. It is a rhythm that is complex and improvisatory, but does not sound random. What do I mean by that? Well, the music needs to conform to a temporal grid of sorts, a metronome basically, and when that tempo changes, it needs to clearly and deliberately do so. And while it's playing within the temporal grid, it needs to be able to generate divisions of that grid. Eighth notes, sixteenth notes, triplets, etc. While also being able to play ornamental rhythms outside the grid to emphasize certain downbeats, offbeats, etc. Basically, it needs to generate rhythm within a grid, but also without the grid, but tastefully. Now let's dive into the modules. Here we have the humble LFO. This will be our main clock source that will drive the whole patch. The reason I'm using an LFO rather than another clock specific module is because I have one knob to change the tempo, which not all clock modules have. And I have a knob and CV control over the pulse width modulation, which will turn the LFO's gates into triggers. I'll show you why that's important later. Now we have the clock divider. For our patch, we're going to actually need multiple clock sources. We could just use multiple LFOs, but it is much more difficult to sync the LFOs to the same tempo. Our goal for our, for our final rhythm is for it to mostly stay in the temporal grid. So clock dividing and multiplying based on one clock is a good solution. This module is very simple. It takes a clock source and multiplies or divides it. These parameters are also CV controllable. And this clock divider also has variable gate length on the output, which will come in very handy later on. Now we have the comparator. This module isn't 100% necessary for our patch, but it is another way to add a clock. All it does is compare an input voltage to a voltage set by this knob, and it outputs a gate whether that voltage is over the knob's set value or below it. We will be using this module in conjunction with our sequencer later. Here we have the gate delay. This is a pretty straightforward module. It takes a gate and delays it by a specified amount of time. The specific gate delay also has a combined output that is a logical combination of the original gate and the delayed version. This module will be very important for generating out of tempo ornamental rhythms. Okay, this is where the magic happens our logic module. This is where we send all of our clock sources and gates to undergo logical processes. A quick rundown for anyone who is unfamiliar with Boolean logic. The AND gate compares two signals, and if they are equal, a gate is outputted. The NOT gate outputs a gate when there is no input signal. An OR gate outputs a gate if at least one gate is present and an XOR gate outputs a gate if only one gate is present. Okay, let's patch this thing up. First, let's start with the LFO, our main clock source. And take the square wave output, put it into the input of the clock divider. Take that output, put it in the input for the gate delay. I'll take the delayed version out into one of the AND inputs, and I'll take the original clock source and put in the other input. Now we should have a output that is the AND version of bo both of them. Let's take them to our clock source for our sequencer, and we'll also put it in the strum input of our mutable instrument's rings. It's already generating rhythm. Pretty regular. Let's see if we can spice things up a bit by messing with these parameters. First, I'm going to try the multiplying. 
multiply it by that much. Looks like we're gonna have to take down the gate length. Because the multi multiplying is too fast. Take that down a bit. Oh yeah, see, they're not lining up now. Let's try getting these gate length up a bit. Yeah, when I get the gate length up high enough, it just stays on all the time. It doesn't re-trigger anymore. So we just get just the clock. But if we take it down, they don't line up. Let's mess with the delay a bit. Ah, see? Now since we're moving the delay a bit, they hit sometimes, very occasionally. Mess with the multiplication a bit, a little bit slower. Let's try messing with the pulse width of the clock, which is just like the gate length of the clock divider. Still nothing. Just to delay a bit. Get that. See, that delay really kind of makes things complicated. Yeah, this is fine and all. Pretty good, not too bad. We do get something that's kind of organic, definitely within a grid. But we can make this much better if we add, if we CB control all of these things. Let's try CB controlling the delay amount. Let's do the pulse width of the LFO. Let's do the FM amount of the LFO. Now it's a lot better, definitely more random sounding, but still within a grid mostly. All of those little splashes of notes in here are ornamental, it's still within a grid. We could theoretically put this with drums, and it should sound mostly fine. Now let's add the comparator to the mix. What we're gonna do, we're gonna take the quantized output from the sequencer into the input of the comparator. Now we're gonna mess with the threshold knob until we get, yes, yeah, as you can see now, the over and under is changing based on the note being played in the sequencer. We're gonna take that, one of them, doesn't matter. I'll take the over one, put it into one of the another AND input. Now I'll take the combination of the gate delay, combination of the direct signal and the delayed signal, put that in the other input. Now I want to combine these two AND operations together. The way I can do that is take them and put them in an OR operation. That'll just combine them because it'll be either OR gate. I can put that in the strum and that in the clock. Now we have two sets of AND operators or AND operations being combined. But they're all based off of the same clock. But now, as you can hear, it's very random sounding but musical, like it's someone improvising. It's deliberate. Let's mess with some more parameters here.
can also do CB direction. This is not a rhythm, but definitely make the pitches more randomized. Nice, nice. We can also do the CB for the comparator threshold. Let's try that. Now we're getting a lot of gates here. Let's see if we can do something like that. Of course, we can also modulate the alphas with each other. Yeah, as you can hear, we can generate interesting organic rhythm that sound natural and sound improvisatory, not totally rhythmic, but definitely not random. And yeah, I encourage you to use these building blocks, add them to your patch, add other modules with these. We haven't even used sampled hold in here, which you can add a lot. We only we also only have an eight step sequencer. We can make it a 16 step sequencer. We can, you know, do much longer sequences than this. And yeah, I encourage you to, you know, build off of this. And yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. Mm -hmm.